It's Friday, and we've got new music and videos from Ariana Grande, so let's talk about it. Plus, Pitbull is back with a new video that has a surprise ending you gotta see. Dear White People returns to Netflix today, and we catch up with the cast. And straight from Zamunda, we have an exclusive look at the Coming to America-inspired sneaker, the signature shoe of league MVP Giannis Antetokounmpo. Plus, French Montana with some hazy details about his new project. If I show you the trailer right now, you will lose your mind. Turn this camera's off, let me show the trailer. Hello, and welcome to Fresh Out Friday, episode two. I'm your host, Kevin Kenny, and as you, uh, you may have heard by now, pretty much everything new in the world of entertainment, gear, TV, movies, music, the whole shebang drops on Friday. So every week we're gonna be coming to you from the MTV studios here in Times Square, talking all of that. We're sort of your one-stop shop for everything new and get you set up properly for the weekend. Lots of new music this week. Last week, you know, you had the Chance album, the uh, Corday album, it was all about albums. This week, it's a lot of songs and videos. Ariana's been teasing it all week on social media, and now Miss Grande's new video, her boyfriend, is finally here. I don't wanna be too much, but I don't wanna miss your touch. You don't seem to give up. The cinematic new clip features the duo Social House, and is a story I think we can all relate to, fantasizing about taking revenge on your ex. Ariana gets a chance to get her Katniss on, kind of like Haley Kyoko did in Taylor Swift's last video. Seems like there's definitely something in the air with archery, one of the summer trends for 2019, I'd say. Social House worked on Thank You Next, Seven Rings. They've also worked with J-Lo, Lil Yachty, and one of them, Mikey, plays Ariana's love interest in the video. Take a look. I know, baby, so complicated. And also you got Brock Hampton who just kind of casually dropped a new song and video that kind of looks like they, yeah, you see that right there? That kind of looks like they shot that on a friend's iPhone maybe. No X's were uh, harmed in the making of this one. It's called I've Been Born Again. Their full length album Ginger is due out later this month and a lot of fans are looking forward to that one. Plus you got the ladies of Haim with a new single out called Summer Girl, which is not an LFO cover. Speaking of summer, it always feels like summer when Mr. 305 is around. I'm talking about Pitbull and he's got another dance floor ready song and video, I assure you. That includes a really fun surprise ending called Three to Tango. We actually played the video for a bunch of Pitbull fans here in Times Square to see their reactions. Let's check that out. Shades. Already. Normal. He's <laughs> <laughs> not putting shades. I'll buy anything Pitbull tries to sell me. That smooth head. You know it's history in the making. Ooh. You touching my man? <laughs> wait, is that, wait, 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 hold on, wait, wait, hold on. Wait, wait. Like, <laughs> Oh, oh, who is this? She goes. Okay. Miss, very Mr. 305. Yes. Okay, business. Okay, she making me want to dance. Oh, she's yeah, beautiful she's though. Is that him? Why he look like that though? Ladies and ladies. Oh, another oh. one. Red hair. Let's go. Why not? Snapping. Two is better than one, right? I'm in I want to see his face though. I think it's like something up with his, his face. Full like... beard? I hope Pitbull's in this, right? Or is this Catfish? <laughs> mm, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm living for the redhead. Like, she's giving me like. Yeah. <laughs> <gasps> That's the guy that played Grease! So. But that's not Pitbull. <laughs> <laughs> What? <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> what? Wait, is that? Trouble? I'm dead. That was, that's what I'm about to say. Liz. John Tra <laughs> no, they did not. <laughs> I can't. Yo, he kind of looks he okay, good, bald but... though, low key. It takes three to tango. Okay, so he's, is he not even in it? It's okay. I still love you, and anything you do, I love it, anyways. <laughs> Dale. 
In album news, Drake released a compilation of B-sides and unreleased tracks called Care Package. We're also excited about two rising artists' debut albums today, Claro, who has been touring as the opening act for Khalid, and our push artist, Mabel. And if that's not enough music for you, you also got Lil Durk's album Love Songs for the Streets 2, which drops today and features some heavy hitters like Nicki Minaj and Meek Mill. And of course, Lil Durk is one of a large and distinguished group of rappers with Lil in their name. You got Lil Uzi Vert, Lil Wayne, Lil Baby, you get the idea. We here at Fresh Out Friday wanted to see if some of our friends, including Lil Durk, could pick out which little Lil rapper is which. Check it out. Which Lil rapper is this? Lil Wayne, Lil Durk, Lil Yachty. Let me see. Whoever this is, man, their mom really cared about them. You know what I'm saying? That looked like a nice Easter. I see the ghetto behind them. So I'm going to say Lil Yachty. Lil Yachty might have came up in the ghetto. That's yeah, he said biggest that Lil Yachty. <laughs> Lil Yachty, the smile gave it away because the grill. But I don't know if that's, you know, he have grill, so he smiled like that all the time. Yeah, that's just, yeah, Yachty. Okay, you know what? You got that same forehead, that little uh, bird maw right there. Y'all talking about my bird maw, but Lil Yachty actually got a real bird maw right now. That's what he got. It ain't me. Who is this? Lil Pump, Lil Dicky, or Lil Skies? I'm going to say that's, uh, that's Lil Pump. I think that's Lil Skies. That is Lil Dicky, bro. Yeah, bro, he from Philly, bro. Out of everybody, Lil Dicky probably the only one that gonna put a book in his hand at that age. Lil Pump, hell no. Lil Skies, hell no. I ain't read really All right, which Lil Rapper is Lil Pump, Lil Xan, or Lil Dicky? Lil Pump. I think that Lil Pump. I don't know, that might look like a little baby Xan right there. He was ugly, oh my God. It's Lil Xan. Legit like him, minus the face tattoos. Lil Xan look like even Steven. I look like even Steven. Which little rapper is this? <laughs> the Shadow Weezy. Oh, you already know who that is, man. That's Lil Dwayne, ain't it? Everybody know that Lil Wayne. Which rapper is that? Lil Wayne? He still look the same. That's crazy. He should just be Big Wayne now. Like, Lil, ba Lil Wayne, Big Wayne look the same. I wonder where he find that Seller outfit on. <laughs> I ain't never seen no baby Seller. Which rapper is that? Whoever that is, they come from a good background. Cause that house in the background, far. That's Uzi Vert right there. Oh, uh, I know that is. That little Uzi Vert. Looking like an uncle. That's definitely Uzi. What a bust a dance move right now. That's little Uzi for sure. Oh, he was so cute. I need a picture of that. What's up? This is your girl, Jamelo Mustafa, and up next, we're covering the freshest in film and TV releases. And what promises to be the action film of the summer, projected to bring in over $70 million domestically at the box office, is Dwayne The Rock Johnson teaming up with Jason Statham for the Fast and Furious Presents Hobbs and Shaw, opening up this weekend. Now, this time around, they got a brand new and equally over-the-top villain in Idris Elba. MTV News' Josh Horowitz spoke to The Rock about why Idris was the perfect choice for this role. Here's what I want to know. Are you, you're only as good as your villain. You got Idris, mm. Idris Elba. I well, mean, what's, what, is there one fight between you guys, you guys and Idris that's gonna knock me back? Well, the goal was who is the actor out there who had the believability that they could go up against not only me, but Jason and us combined. Yeah. And it just fit that bill, man. And he came in and he really created a character who we believe that audiences will ultimately actually fall in love with. Oh yeah, I definitely agree with The Rock. Now, I got a chance to see this film, and outside of the action packed, over the edge, every single moment you're holding on, like what's gonna happen next, the film is just amazing. They even have a special guest appearance from an A-list actor that's gonna blow your mind. Now, if you prefer to do Netflix and chill this weekend, the third season of Dear White People popped off this weekend, and I got a chance to sit down with the three leading ladies of the show. Check it out. Do you have another angle? I'm sure you look vain in that one, too. As long as I'm not being edited to be the villain, don't Phaedra me. You offered to flip a table. That girl was young and naive. This woman knows better now. 
Ashley, I saw an emotional post that you took to Instagram. You know, you and, and one of your best friends. And Logan, Logan, and Logan recorded Logan. it. It's the video. Yes, so she the video. The videographer. And, and with the other friend, you see the billboard of you guys, right? And yeah. I see the photos, of, and you got emotional. What was yeah. that like seeing it in LA? Oh my gosh, for me, it was such validation and honor for my parents who have sacrificed and given me so much. And it was exciting because I knew that it was representation. I have driven past that same billboard for the past almost 10 years and been inspired by the very people that I was seeing up there. So I'll always remember it. A manifestation of your hard work, yeah. all of you. Logan, uh, do you got a little Sam in you? Have you ever like said, oh shoot, that's a Sam moment right there. <laughs> that's a Sam moment right there. Logan isn't Sam, Logan is much weirder and stranger than Sam, but um, there are parts of us that are close together and I, I've appreciated everything that she's taught me. The cast of Dear White People stuck around to play a little game we like to call Dear Blank. Dear, dear, dear. <coughs> dear dog owners, please pick up your dog food. <coughs> Curb your enthusiasm and curb your dog. It's stressing me out and it's <laughs> triggering. Dear touchy-feely people, Please don't touch me with your grubby hands. Use hand sanitizer, often. <laughs> Dear men of all ages, stop wearing sandals with your socks. It's weird. Was that a Can PSA, that? It's like a PSA. Who were you <laughs> in that moment? We don't want the mandals and socks. It ain't cute. You can do it in a house it's if you yeah, want to, I guess. Yeah, I know. Whatever. Dear restaurants, please be a little bit more flexible on your policy of not seating people. I don't get why one person there coming 13 minutes late is preventing the whole party from eating. You're really invested in this. Going. You should start a petition or something. I just don't think it's what? right. So you don't agree with this policy. You Listen, think the restaurant should keep people from eating. You're well, telling I'm, me you're okay if we go I to eat at a restaurant and Logan's running three minutes behind and you're well, starving that the restaurant doesn't You said 13 see this? minutes. You didn't say three minutes. But I'm That's saying they thing. should let us should still eat you. if Logan's not there on time. What if so, what if something happens? Why is it automatically Logan? Because you it know Logan's me. always late. <laughs> Dear New Yorkers. Hey! If you brush past me when you're on the way to work and you don't say I'm sorry, I am from the South, honey, and I will let you know that it's a problem. <laughs> Yours truly. I know I'm not the only one who's gonna be tuned into HBO this weekend as Euphoria is coming up on its final episode. But another Netflix show is Orange is the New Black, which is currently on its seventh and final season. Kevin got a chance to chop it up with Diane Guerrero, who plays Maritza. Check it out. Do you have any money? No. Do you have any money? And the show, of course, has just been such an amazing voice for transgender awareness, for LGBTQ issues. Did you realize at the onset that it would become this voice for all of those communities? I mean, I knew that we were going to be tackling some heavy issues, that we were going to be telling uh, humanizing stories about people who were cast away. Uh, we were going to be sharing how laws were written and enforced to disproportionately affect people of color and especially women. Um, so I, I knew that that was important. And of course, later on when I'm doing these interviews and I'm talking about such serious stuff, I'm like, oh yeah, we're doing a serious show here. You were so open and, and candid and, and, and it was really fascinating in your memoir, talking about your own personal life experiences with immigration. It's tough, I mean, just let alone any role, it's kind of tough to leave the role at work right at the end of the day, go home and be your own person. But when yeah. you're tapping into such intimate personal experiences from your own life, what was that like? Was that a challenge? Yes, it was. Because, you know, you're in these jumpsuits, you're dealing with kind of deplorable circumstances, even though you are acting, I mean, you're in those circumstances, you know, you're living this out because you know that people actually live this way. I know that I experienced it, I know my family experienced it. There, there were probably countless personal experiences or just, you know, overall memories that you tapped into, you know, to uh, inform the role this season. But is there one that comes to mind, a particular poignant one where you actually had to think back to maybe a hard time, maybe an emotional time in your own personal life and? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Aside from seeing the images of people at the border and families at the border being separated, I mean, I had to think about the time when I saw my mom uh, leaving in a van. And, and that, that was heartbreaking, you know? So, yeah, yeah, I, I mean, even now, I'm just, I, I get into that place and, and that's kind of where you need to go is that moment of loss that moment of, I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. I am ripped away from my family, from my friends, from anything that I know. 
that's all very real. Um, and I, I, I wanted to, to show that, those yeah. emotions. And you convey it in a beautiful way, a really moving way, which Thank is very you. important. Thank you. You kicked butt. Thank you. What did you think of MTV? You won them over with the cool lingo? I can't even believe I'm here, okay? <laughs> I would watch TRL as a kid. I'd be like, don't be fooled by that rock that I got. And I was like, damn, I always wish I could be. I, I want to be there. Yeah. And now look at me. Yeah. I'm with you here. Exactly. TRL. And you're here. My new favorite superhero, Diana Guerrero. <laughs> Check her out on the final season, Orange is the New Black. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you. Last week, if you watched the show, we hooked you up with an exclusive look of the new Kyrie Irving Nike SpongeBob sneakers. And this week, we've got another VIP experience just for you. You may have seen photos online, but here they are, IRL. That means in real life. The NBA's 2019 MVP, Giannis Antetokounmpo, has teamed up with Nike to celebrate Eddie Murphy's classic 1980s comedy, Coming to America, as well as his own journey from Greece to the US. Now, in case you haven't seen the movie, uh, Eddie Murphy stars as a prince from a fictional African country who flees to America to find true love. The shoe features a black and gold colorway with leopard print inspired by the character's princely stole, and the tongue has the movie title embroidered inside, which is pretty cool, and lo and behold, here they are. What's really cool about these guys is, as you can see, there's the fur on the tongue, with the title right there, as we said, and then you got the velvet looking swoosh, which is pretty rad. And then if you go on the bottom, get a tight shot of that one, a little glitter effect on the sole there. So good news for you, if you dig what you're looking at right here, these shoes drop today and are available everywhere if you get there before they sell out. You know, with all the talk about the movie sequel coming to America on the horizon, these really might not be the last of this collection, so keep your eyes out for stuff like that. In more gear news, Adidas.com made it rain Yeezys this morning after a mysterious countdown clock appeared on the site yesterday afternoon. A limited number of the most sought after styles were released, including the Static, the Zebras, the Beluga, and even the Gray 750s. The bad news? Most likely, they are already sold out. In more gear news, Tyler, the creator's Golf Whistler capsule collection for Converse drops tomorrow and includes two different colorways and coordinating track suits. And in honor of Discovery Channel's super popular Shark Week that wraps up this Sunday, Vans have released both kids and adult sized Shark Week slip-ons and high tops. While stars like Justin Bieber and The Weeknd have been hinting at new projects, we are excited about one of our favorites, French Montana's upcoming release. Now, we don't have a title or release date just yet, but what we do know is the man is not at a loss for material. We sat down with French for a little insider intel about the new record. Take a look. As far as the album, I feel like, you know, I made about 2,000 songs, you know, so I picked like the best 12, 14 songs. This record right here, if I show you the trailer right now, you will lose your mind. T turn these cameras off and show the trailer. Yeah, for real? No, turn these cameras off and show the trailer. I feel like, you know, as an artist, you experience new things. If you go to Bahamas, you don't go to Bahamas again. You want to go to Bora Bora. If you go to Bora Bora, you're going to go to Maldives. If you go to Maldives, you're going to go to Thailand. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, in between, you want to experience new things. And as an artist, if you can't adapt to new things and not change yourself and make them come around you, I feel like that's, that's, that's the beauty of art. In order for an artist to get bigger and bigger, you can't get sunk into that, cra that, 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 that crab bucket, you know? That crab bucket is only crabs behind you trying to pull you down. You ever seen a crab bucket when you're about to go buy food? So I feel like the game is just about, you know, um, soaking all the energy in. Like SpongeBob. <laughs> I work with some real beautiful people. I can't give you the names yet, because the paperwork's done in the making. So, but I have my favorite people working on these albums. The Weeknd, Drake, my brother. I gotta have him on every album. Elton John. Nah, I'm joking. <laughs> Nah, that's it, that's it. It's um, Drake, um, The Weeknd, and Max B. And Chink's Drugs, my brother. I don't know if he's in jail, if he's home, I don't know. He just called me every day at four o'clock. He told me, yo, what you think about that, <laughs> that record? I'm like, where you at? He know, Max B laughing. And I'd 
be like, brother, where are you? Can I see you? What's going on? No, 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 not right now. So I don't really know. You got a song with Cardi B and Post Malone. The song with Cardi B and Post Malone, we was long overdue for that song. Cardi, I remember, I remember hearing a song, and I'm like, yo, I hear Cardi on this. Then I DM'd her. She was like, yo, you're the first superstar I ever met back in the days. Only God can make things like this happen. You know what I'm saying? She's blessed. You know what I'm saying? She got good karma. And I just felt like, you know, everything coming together, man. I felt like, you know, karma is the best religion. Anything else you want to say about the album before we wrap that up? The, the biggest album ever. All right, French. Well, uh, you can't say he lacks self-confidence there. Can't wait to hear where he goes next musically after the success, of course, of Unforgettable. Now, this has been Fresh Out Fridays. Thanks for hanging with us. Now go out and have an awesome weekend.